it rattles around. <laughs> Pimp my ride, we heard you like uh, Jubilee clips. Mm. They think it's broken. Oh, it's actually a bit rusty, isn't it? Now I gotta ride or die. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we have bought our little 500 pound ML 500 down to the garage to see what is wrong with it. If you didn't watch the last video, please go back on the channel. We actually did a 500 pound car challenge and this is what I ended up with. Uh, yeah, I paid 500 quid for a V8 ML 500. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get straight into it, get it inside, see how bad the underneath is because we'd already assessed paintwork, rust and the interior and how it drove, but of course, as you guys may or may not know from the first video, there is three weeks MOT on this vehicle. So we're going to see how bad it is, whether we should MOT it or not, or whether we should cut loose and just send it down the road already. But let's get the vehicle inside, see what it's like, see how bad it is underneath. He's a big one! Just fit. Go on. There's definitely a blow in here somewhere. <laughs> and one, two, three. <laughs> what is that? That's gotta be what. Who has done this? <laughs> That's gotta be. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> done this what have you done why is that like that no wonder it's blowing oh my god that i've never seen that before a good one, have you ever seen that before uh, not to that scale no no not to that. i've seen uh, scales wow that's another level of there's like a tenner's worth of job, <laughs> i was gonna it? say just get the welder out Th there's our first problem and um, that's where i'm assuming the blow is coming from is is right there what an what the, it's not the oddest thing i've ever seen oh my god this one isn't isn't actually at all um put back together this one definitely is and what we saying it's got cat here cat there cat cat here cat here so that's four cats a massive box, another box. and and another well, and another box on the back oh it's actually a bit rusty isn't it yeah. hmm okay well, what we'll do is we'll assess what we've just seen get back to you guys in a second because um hmm. so yeah cat here and then, and there's a cat here as wow. well um, <laughs> Wow. Who? What? Okay, that's um, anti rattle measures if I've ever seen it. I think it's blowing. I think it's blowing. <laughs> I think it's blowing. Pimp, pimp my ride. We heard you like uh, Jubilee clips. So yeah. Jubilee so clips we put Jubilee, Jubilee clips Jubilee. on your Jubilee clips. <laughs> wow, that is another level of Jubilee clip. Yeah, that's just polish all the Jubilees and leave them. <laughs> just leave it as is. Maybe you can put them up the other way so they roll on the top. Yeah, th they're not though. Just assessing the bodywork as we go, are we? Yeah, I mean, I was just having a look at the. some of the. Can you not? Can you not do that, mate? That your 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 fun that you went through that. So we've started the ML up to see where the blow is coming from, and are we saying it's not coming from where the Jubilee uh, clips are? It's coming from that horrendous. Is it really? Yeah. Funnily enough, it's coming from where the multiple Jubilee clips have been put on one of the banks of cats that side. Get on this there. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, that's perfect. So that's so the first thing is it needs another cat. Or that one cat oh, changing at least. Well it needs they come in a pair. Needs to, oh they come in a pair, so you have to buy both. Two cats then. Nice. So what have we found? A brake pipe. Yes, yeah, cable tied. Cable to the tied to the subframe. And it rattles around. Which is not really what you want on your on your brakes. You don't want it chafing a hole in it really, no. <laughs> <Can't> <laughs> feel feel that. <laughs> That's an extra one. You wouldn't what clip it? it off because I'll just clip it off, but like you just uh, 
That's for so that touches before the rest of the car touches. Yeah, when you when you curve, yeah, yeah. That's the front parking sensor. Ah, oh, let's see if there's some. That makes there. sense. Ah. Oh. Right, so they've done away with the conventional ones. Yeah, I, I noticed that there's holes, but no nothing there. Not even some wiring. But there's no curb feed. We're gonna have to put curb feed as well. Exhaust is slightly dripping things. Is that right? Maybe. Oh yeah. Oh, there it is. On the way down at this eye level, I can spot even more rust than I expected. But yeah. <laughs> Woohoo, one came off. I'm going to cut the rest. Basically, a few have come off, as you can see, littered on the floor. Some of them are just spinning around. So they might have been on there a while. And as you can see, the amount of rot on this cat, especially. <laughs> wow. Have you found the hole? I've found loads. <laughs> I've found some holes. Eventually. So, we're back at home. I have an invoice bill for the ML. Do you know what? We're gonna have to sit down for this because, um, yeah, that's that's where this video is going. Just move the um, cables. Right, so, back of the ML. I have an invoice. Now, what I tried to do in this video was sort of assess as much as I could off camera and come up with a plan. Come up with a plan for the truck. Now, buying a 500 quid car, I do not recommend it when it's something like this because this is the sort of thing we're going to deal with. This is my sort of job, YouTube, but um, I would never want this to happen to someone else, so just be careful out there. Anyway, you saw the state of the cat. Um, there is four cats at the front, so two on the downpipe, two in the center, a box, and then I think there's another box at the back. Anyway, basically, one of those is 100% done. Um, it is dead. As you saw, it was jubilee clipped to high heavens. That's gonna need replacing. Now, you, of course you could put a non-factory one in there if you really wanted to. We were going off, um, say I took this to a Mercedes dealer, how much they would ask to actually um, put a cat on it. We found one, the only one for sale, um, matching the codes that this one has, 912 pounds. That's just the cat, so that's one cat. I then asked, you know, when you buy a second-hand car, say, you know, something with mileage on it. There's no service history, there's no nothing, so a service. This is all independent, actual, pricing from a garage this isn't some glorified silly you know plucking it out of the sky sort of uh, pricing 299 pound they would charge yes you can get it cheaper anywhere else but that's um you know v8 so plugs you know everything for a v8 of uh, this size vehicle transmission service because it clonks a little bit when it goes into gear i noticed that um especially on the way back but we noticed that coming into the garage it clonks a little bit and i was like well to be fair it doesn't look like anything's you know out of place so yeah a diff um um, service as well as transmission service 475 pound that is retail what they would ask for again i know the comments are going to probably be rife for people telling me that um these prices are out of control my mate can do them on his driveway 50 quid so save the car blah blah just giving you a vague understanding as to what's going on here so tires it could do with three but you're going to change four at the end of the day for the mot the mot as you you know some people might have done an mot check on this it's actually up on the 28 the tires need to be done three are pretty much perished um the one that isn't perished is I'm assuming because of the tracking, it's um, wearing really uneven. So four tires of this size, they're funny. They're not a funny size, but they're not a 20, a 21, 22 that you'd find on, you know, usual um, four by fours these days. So the tire wall is actually quite a lot bigger and the tire size is a bit different. Uh, so they're actually 128 pound for some okay ones, not ditch finders. Um, so that's 513 pound 76 for all for tires the mot would be 45 quid that's just you know pretty self-explanatory uh consumables so you know getting rid of the oil getting rid of the tires like whatever's going on that totaled to 75 pound the other thing i asked them to do is just sort of assess the center console electrics because they weren't working it might be a fuse it might not be a fuse it might be the whole unit but to actually assess that is you know a couple of hours work you'd have to pull the lot out just change wiring you know maybe it takes an hour maybe it takes two hours 64 pound an hour i don't think that the um heated seat button and all the ones across the bottom may be linked with the center the low range button doesn't work and the heater controls work when they want so i think that's about right to actually assess that and labor on top of all of that nine hours they were quoting mainly for um rusty bolts on the cat you're not sure what you're going to get yourself into uh with something like this so you want to make sure the labor rate that could change it could be varied it could be half that but they're just going off what they would probably expect 576 pounds worth of labor brings us in at a grand total of three thousand twenty three pounds and seventy six 
pee. That's without the bodywork. So what would you do? Would you fix it up? Would you trade it on? Would you try and get an MOT on it a little bit cheaper? Would you find a cheaper cat? What would you actually do to this 500 pound Mercedes ML? I've got an idea of what is next. So tune in next Sunday. It might see a different fate as to what I was, uh, I was expecting for this. But if you did like today's video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And hopefully we can do more uh, 500 pound weird car challenges where I buy silly things and they're absolutely destroyed. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. Me and the ML will see you next week. Oh dear. <laughs>